It looks like a typical summer morning in Washington's Olympic National Park. But this one's different. In a few hours, the Elwha River will be a little more wild. Our objectives are real simple. We want to safely shut down both dams and power plants and we're going to reroute the uh, current water that we're running through the turbine generators over the spillway. Today, two power plants on the Elwha will produce their last kilowatt. The era of hydropower on this river is ending. Elwha Dam, completed in 1913, formed Lake Aldwell. In 1927, Glines Canyon Dam created Lake Mills. Together, these reservoirs can corral enough water to cover the area of a football field seven miles deep. Gravity carries the water through giant metal pipes to powerhouse turbines, spinning them and making electricity. That is, until now. There'll be no more power plants, there'll be no more dams, there'll be no more energy production off the river. We stepped from one era, the old era, into the new era. Okay, we're bringing the load down right now. The Glines powerhouse on the upper Elwha is the first to go offline. All right, you guys, here we go. We are shutting everything off in one day. And to do that, there needs to be a specific sequence because most of the stuff here is manual. It's not automatic. At Lower Elwha Dam, final yeah, preparations are underway. The last so minutes of this historic system tick to a close. You guys ready? Today, shutting four running units, operating units down is, is something we've never done before. Never, never on purpose. Here we go, John. turbines wind down to silence. The first thing that you sense is the lack of noise. Before, when the plants were running, you could never hear the river. All you could hear is the units. It almost feels like a time warp. 919. Elwha is put to bed. You can't help work next to a river as beautiful as this place every day and not feel some sentiment toward it. It's been a great run. Now we're stepping into the new era where we're going to start producing salmon, start allowing the ecosystem to restore itself to the way it was 100 years ago. Long before the turbines stopped spinning, park scientists had already begun sowing the seeds of recovery. We're doing a lot of things really just to try to get nature kick-started. Including one of the largest plant restoration projects in Park Service history. Over the seven years that we'll be doing this project, we'll be installing more than 400,000 plants. The seeds come from the Elwha. Some of the plants take up to two to three years before they're ready to be outplanted. These green shoots will help reclaim nearly 800 acres buried for decades beneath the reservoirs. One week ago, basically, where we're standing was underwater. As water levels are drawn down during dam removal, a moonscape emerges. The first layer of barren sediment is already visible at Lake Mills. So you don't have developed soils. You don't have any living vegetation. You don't have any biological legacies. Crews test over 80 native species in search of resilient pioneers that can take root here. I find this process incredibly exciting. At Elwha Dam, hundreds arrive from around the country to celebrate. Tribal members, officials, political leaders, river advocates, and a parade of cameras. So this is truly a historic event, uh, the largest dam removal in the United States. It's something that our children won't ever forget, and our elders are here to witness it. This is a story of persistence. It's a story of of resilience, of people, of those 
fish that are waiting right down below the dam. And those salmon are still wanting to go upstream, and we're going to make it possible for them to do that. One, two, three. Like a hungry animal, the excavator takes a bite, then tucks in for a larger meal. 80,000 tons of concrete must be removed before dams disappear. Nine miles upriver, a barge floats on 150 feet of water in Lake Mills. Here, an experienced crewman carves the first notch into Glines Canyon Dam. And from where he's sitting, he cannot see the top of the dam, so he's basically working blind until he can get the, the surface of the dam down and basically his eye level. Water and sediment held in reservoirs behind the dams will soon be on the move as the pace of deconstruction picks up. A variable contractors cannot control is the weather. Fall and winter storms bring high flows. But one thing is certain, the Elwha's voice will rise as the dams disappear. Yeah, you can't not have respect for the, the Elwha River. Mother Nature dictates. In the next webisode, King Salmon Return, with a little help. <laughs>